The Aksumite Empire was an ancient polity whose territory was mostly in modern Ethiopia and Eritrea, but who also at various points in her history projected her power to the Sudanese Kushite Empire, up to Roman Egypt, into modern Djibouti, Yemen, and possibly even parts of Saudi Arabia. We learn all of this information from written inscriptions left behind by the Aksumites. Often our remaining sources are bi or even trilingual, incorporating Greek alongside native languages in a testament to the international nature of the empire. The Aksumites heavily influenced prominent trade both in the Red Sea and in the hinterlands of Northeast Africa, and yet, despite its antique importance, I wouldn't be surprised if some of you guys have not heard of the Aksumites before, and I also wouldn't be surprised if even those who have heard of it don't really know that much about it. This is due to, well, a bunch of different things. One of them is that the inscriptions that we have discovered from the Aksumites are scarce and often fragmented, meaning that scholars rely heavily on archaeology to gain an understanding of the Aksumite Empire. And so, you know, aside from the fact that this is just kind of cool, this is one of the reasons why the recent discovery of an entire Aksumite city is so important. Now, the last time that I talked about an old town being discovered, it involved using fancy technology to uncover some hitherto unseen buried ruins in southern Africa. It was quite dramatic, <laughs> and not this time. This city, the Aksumite city, was found in 2009, when locals told a bunch of archaeologists, uh, hey, look, there, there's a site over there, it's pretty cool, you should probably check it out. And what the archaeologists found was what they would call a, a tau. Basically, it's a pile of stuff that accumulates when people live in the same area for hundreds, if not even thousands of years. The tau in question was about 14 hectares and 25 meters tall, but the town is even bigger than the tau, around 20 hectares. Now, we don't usually use hectares in day-to-day -day living, so I'd understand if this doesn't really mean much of anything to most of you guys. For the Americans out there, that is about 36 football fields, and for the rest of the world, it's about 28. Now, the archaeologists would dig two trenches into the town in successive excavations from 2011 to 2016. One was dug at the top of the hill and was called Area A, the other was dug at the base and was called Area B. Now, the way that tells work is that they broadly form in these things that archaeologists call settlement layers. Um, basically, the idea behind this is that older stuff will be closer to the bottom of the pile, newer stuff will be closer to the top of the pile. Therefore, if the site is undisturbed, then the deeper that you dig, the older that the stuff that you'll find will be. The oldest stuff that's been found so far is in Area A. Old wheat seeds that date anywhere from 771 to 485 BC, and pottery that is often associated with what is called the pre aksumite period of around 900 to 300 BC. The most recent finds are in Area B, uh, charcoal samples from anywhere in the 6th or 7th century AD. It's probably unlikely that we're gonna get much of anything more recent than that, but even still, this range of finds shows that this settlement was lived in for around 1,000 years. Area A is thought to have been dug into someone's house, workshop, courtyard, or some combination of all three, and the archaeologists say this because of the mixture of pots, bowls, and cauldrons alongside evidence for metal and glass production that were found there. Most interesting to me, though, are the Aksumite coins that were found alongside the pots, bowls, and cauldrons. The coins have a mixture of symbols. Some hold pagan iconography, like the crescent and the disc, and others have a Christian cross. The coins show that during the 1,000 years that this town was lived in, its people, like those elsewhere in the world, were converted to a new faith, and they would have visited the basilica that was found in Area B, which seemingly was rapidly becoming a major center of the town. And yet, at the same time, the conversion of the Aksumite Empire was probably neither as drastic nor as sudden as what might be implied by the sudden shifts in coinage. Indeed, what was found in the Basilica is strong evidence for a potential mixture of Christian symbols and scripture with pagan figures and objects. At the entrance of the Basilica, the archaeologists found a pretty typical Christian inscription, but inside, they found uh, cattle figurines and a bull-themed ring. 
The figurines, as the archaeologists note, are similar in style to those associated with the nearby Ona culture, a culture that, to our current knowledge, predates the Aksumite Empire by centuries. These figurines are thought to have had a religious purpose in the Ona culture, and if this is correct, then it's possible that the Christian Aksumites who worshipped in this church might have maintained some of the practices of their pagan cousins to the north. Alongside religious iconography, the archaeologists found a lot of really fancy prestige goods in the basilica, showing us that this was an area that held substantial wealth, maybe even that it was a kind of market area. They found glass beads, African red slip pottery, Aqaba amphora from the Roman Empire, stamp seals, incense burners, and the remains of cattle at a much higher rate than is found in the residential area up the hill. The archaeologists think that the high rate of animal remains might mean that this area was used for feasts, either communal or because of the high rate of cattle, for the wealthy. As of now, they're not sure. So, all in all, this town is a very interesting find, and the amount of things that we don't know about what was uncovered shows us just how much work has left to be done. The discovery of this town was, for obvious reasons, very important for Axumite archaeology, but in more ways than one might think. See, the archaeologists note in the beginning of their paper, Merasamati, Discovery and Excavation of an Axumite Town, that the archaeology of the Axumite Empire is currently very limited and overly focused on three specific sites, the ancient and still lived in town of Axum, the ancient town of Yeha, and the ancient port city of Adulis. But we know for a fact that this area had a decent amount of urbanization during the Axumite period. Further, studies on Axum have for a long time focused very heavily on what one might call prestige culture. Finds like the cattle figurines help us to better localize the culture and people of the Axumite Empire. Finally, finds like these further highlight the important role that Ethiopia will probably, or at least will hopefully, take on in the future for those who are trying to learn more about the development of Christianity in the ancient world. Again, Aksum was among the first world powers, potentially the first, to officially adopt Christianity as a religion. Its rivals for that title are Armenia and Rome. Anyway, ignoring all of that, the oldest currently known extant illustrated Christian manuscripts were recently quote-unquote discovered in an Ethiopian monastery a few years ago. Obviously, heavy quotes around the word discovered, because the people at the monastery seem to have been doing a pretty decent job of keeping the manuscripts intact for over 1,000 years, but, you know, more evidence to my point. <laughs> anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, make sure to uh, check out my other African archaeology videos. Make sure to read the article that this video is based off of too, because there's a lot of stuff that was left out of this video, and I will see you all in the next one.